Okay, let's get started. Um, my name is Celie Ressler. I'm an occupational therapist. I've been doing OT for over 22 years now. And my last 10 years have been primarily in home care. Um, occupational therapy, first of all, what is occupational therapy? And it's not about getting a job. <laughs> and basically, which is what everyone thinks. Basically, the, it's, it's teaching people about the the job of daily living is what it is. So activities of daily living, uh, helping people dress. Um, actually, compared to physical therapy is what I'll start with. Um, physical therapy will come and help the patient with walking and balance and strengthening their legs. Occupational therapy will come and help with self-care strategies. So how is the patient going to be able to dress themselves, toilet, shower, anything that they want to be able to do as part of their activities of daily living, their ADLs. Um, I've had instances with child care, how, do patients, how are patients going to manage that? So anything that's included in activities of daily living is what OT is about. Um, but one of the most important things is to be able to do it safely and to prevent falls. And this is where this in-service comes in. So I just had some um, numbers to throw at you from the National Council on Aging and the CDC. Um, one in four Americans aged 65 and over falls each year. Uh, every 11 seconds, an older adult is treated in the emergency room for a fall. And every 19 minutes, an older adult dies from a fall. So this is pretty prevalent, and you see why it's important to do all these fall risk assessments. Um, the CDC says in 2014, Older Americans experienced 29 million falls, mm. causing 7 million injuries and costing an estimated 31 billion in annual Medicare costs. And this number is expected to rise as more than 10,000 Americans turn 65 each day. I thought that was pretty cool. Now my cards are out of order. <laughs> <coughs> Huh? <laughs> We're a gentle crowd. <laughs> um, one half to two thirds of falls takes place in the home, which makes our job as people, as therapists or professionals that come to the home, even more important to assess fall risks and make sure that everything is safe. So what I wanted to do next is to kind of visualize with all of you what it's like to come to a patient's house and then kind of guide you to what kind of things to look for. Uh, for safety and fall risk. Um, so we'll kind of look at that first, and then we'll go through solutions uh, afterwards, because you know there's going to be solutions for everything, almost. Um, so let's start off um, and kind of drive up. I mean, the assessment starts a second. You get out of your car, and it's going to be going throughout the whole visit. You're always reassessing for safety, and every visit you're going to reassess for safety as well. So it's definitely ongoing. So on the handout, I have as we kind of like as we walk into the house. So the first thing is the entrance, the entryway. So you got to look at the steps, if there are any steps. Are they wobbly? Are they shaky? Are they cracked? Um, is there um, a railing? Is it secure? Is there lighting? <coughs> There's so many things that even just in that first step, you got to take a look at. Um, okay, so we open the door, and then we look at the entryway. Is there lighting for that? Um, is it cluttered? Is there a clear pathway throughout the rooms? Um, are there electrical cords all over the place? Throw rugs? You know the patients love their throw rugs. Okay? So throw rugs, oxygen tubing, that's all over too. Um, so that again, it's just in the entrance, right? You keep going a little further, now we're heading to the bedroom. Okay, again, throw rugs, you know, are going to be there. Lighting, again. Now, what about access to the light switch? Can a patient get to the light switch safely, easily? Um, what about the phone to call for help? Can they have, do they have access for that, or are they going to fall trying to reach for it? Um, if you're looking at a facility, where is the call button for help? And can the patient get to that, or is that going to be another fall risk? Now, if the patient is... <coughs> I know you guys see patients like in all levels, like wheelchair bound, ambulatory, everything. Um, if the patient is using an assistive device, 
in the bedroom? Is there room for him to move around with a walker, or is he kind of like holding it and trying to squeeze in to be able to get in and out of bed or to the bedroom, to the bathroom, or wherever it is? Then the bathroom, bathroom shower. You know that's a biggie. Uh, are there any loose bath mats? Are there grab bars in the shower? No suction grab bars. I haven't found any. Actually, one time, I thought I found one that works. <laughs> I thought. And then, like, two weeks later, middle of the night, it popped off. So I haven't found any that works. So no suction grab bars. Is the hot and cold water clearly marked for safety? Um, what about the toilet seat? Is it high enough, or is the patient using like the doorway to pull up, or the doorknob to pull up? A lot of patients use a towel rack to pull up, and you kind of see it loose in the wall. Um, again, all these are major fall risks, mm -hmm. and most of the falls are in the bathroom. The shower, is there a shower chair if they need? Is there a tub bench that need if they need? Um, and are those at a good height for being able to transfer? If patients are in the shower standing, um, are they going to have to let go of both hands to put, put shampoo in their hand or to squeeze a bottle? And if they do that, how safe is that for them to do? And what are we going to do to solve that problem? Um, if they're using the tub bench, you know, the one that sticks out of the tub, a lot of times the water splashes out, uh, you know, because the shower curtain doesn't go around. So again, what are we going to do about all the water spilling and the fall hazard with that? So am I bringing up things that you might have already thought about or anything new, hopefully? Just things to assess and to look into. Kitchen. Okay, we're on into the kitchen. Again, throw rugs. Okay. Now, are the things that the patient uses the most, are they within reach? Or are they climbing on little stools? Are they bending down to try and get stuff? Um, the containers, are they heavy? And are they huge that they can't even carry them together with a walker? And that's another fall risk. Is the microwave or toaster within reach? Or are they like reaching like all the way up to like a bowl of soup to try to get it down? If the patient is using a stove, are they cognitively okay and safe to use that? And how are they carrying things in the kitchen? I mean, if they're not using a device, that's fine. But if they're using a walker, how are they carrying the plate or the cups or all that stuff? Lots of things to look at. Okay, and that's just really just a glimpse, really, and just to uh, take into account things that patients do. Um, we'll go into other considerations, but actually just remember it. I had a patient who decided she's going to clean the window behind the kitchen sink, right in the kitchen. So she's going to climb into the sink. She's in her 90s. She's going to climb into the sink to reach the window and clean it. And, of course, she fell backwards. But, you know, anything is a fall hazard. Um, and you really have to take into account the patient's cognitive ability and judgment, too. Um, okay, so we kind of look through the house, but there are other considerations um, that we have to look at. Uh, visual impairments, right? So I'm sure you've come uh, into, uh, you've had that too. Can the patient find the doorways and know where to go? Um, can they call for help? And can they use the microwave safely? Can they use the stove, the um, phone? And if not, then we'll have to figure out ways for them to use it uh, effectively and safely. Hearing impairment, same thing. Can they call for help? Now, we can't forget about pets because those are major fall hazards. Are they like all over, like in between the patient's legs and they're tripping over them? Um, hopefully they're not walking them with a leash and they're getting pulled. Is the patient having to bend over to fill the water bowl or the food bowl or the litter box or all those things that you have to really think about? And is the food the bag of food or the litter or whatever it is, is it heavy? And are they like carrying it and trying to spill it out? Because that won't really work. Oxygen, same, uh, another thing, the tubing. Does the patient know how to hold it correctly? 
Uh, does the patient can the patient see where it's at so they're not tripping? Um, and then basic oxygen safety, like no um, fire around the oxygen. And is the patient aware? Patient and caregivers aware of that. Uh, wheelchairs. Patients in a wheelchair, do they know how to lock the brakes? And do they lock the brakes? And can they reach the brakes to lock it? Um, if they're sitting in a cushion in the chair, is the cushion sliding out? And is the patient going to fall with that? Um, so I've got to look at that too. So a lot to look at when you come into the home. And I was kind of going to open it up to you guys. Can you think of any other fall hazards that maybe you've seen in patients' homes, other things that we need to consider. Medication management is probably a good, another thing we got to look at for safety. Um, I know that um, like changing from a hardwood floor to the carpet, mm -hmm. just that little lip mm -hmm. is a trick that we Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of times. Sometimes um, there are pets or cats or dogs, sometimes when they're around them, sometimes they tend to trip over mm -hmm. them. And, I mean, sometimes they can't see them or, or hear that they're around them. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes they, they trip. get on the way. Yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. Well, a lot of our families have either children or grandchildren yeah. around mm -hmm. or who come to visit, and the little kids leave toys around, toys mm -hmm. or the little kids are running, running around, around, and mm -hmm. they get underfoot, too, just like mm -hmm. cats do. I, I hear a lot of our patients, like, they forget they can't walk, and they try mm -hmm. to get out of the bed. Mm -hmm. that's Without the walker. That's a big issue, and, yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. they end up on the floor. Lots of risks, lots of falls. So how are we going to solve it? You probably, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Besides oh that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say before I even bring up all the solutions that we do have to take into account that it is the patient's house and we can't just come and pick things up without their consent and make changes. It is ultimately up to them or the family, but we could definitely strongly, strongly urge or um, you know, give them ideas. So that's the first section and we could go on to solutions if there aren't any, unless you have any other questions. Um, this first part. All clear? Nice. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back toward, through visualizing. We're going to go back to the entrance, okay, back to where we started. And let's see what we could do. And this is on your second page. All right, and the steps. A lot of times you can't tell where one step starts and the next begins. You just need a color contrast kind of tread just on the edge um, to help the patient know where the steps are. And on the bottom step, get a different color so that they know this is the end, like this is the bottom step and you could keep moving. Uh, light switches, the bottom and the top of the steps to make sure there's light. You could also get, I like the motion activated lights and they're not really that expensive. You just kind of stick them on wherever you need them um, and this way they have better lighting. Then we're in the entryway. Okay, we gotta make sure there's no clutter. Throw rugs, right? So patients are very attached to them <laughs> and they're not gonna wanna remove them. They have some deep meaning that we don't know about. <laughs> but one day we'll understand. <laughs> we don't have any throw rugs, so. <laughs> so I wanted to show you this. This is rug tape. I use this a lot. I'm actually going to leave some for you guys, those that you have. And it doesn't leave any mark. I mean, it's meant for rugs. And you just stick it onto the corners. I mean, they have different sizes, so yeah, depending on the rug. Stick it on the corner so at least um, they don't trip. You know, if they're not going to remove it, then let's try this. And it always works. This one. Except for when a dog pees on it. They do not work <laughs> when a dog pees on it. From experience. <laughs> they, they stick on rug to rug, so patients. Yes. Oh. Yes. <coughs> yeah. So these are really good. I carry them with me all the time. And you have to replace them when you wash the rug, right? If it's like or a when bath mat, and when you pee, when you pee on it. Yeah, they do not stick with pee. Yeah. 
the patient complained, but that is the deal. <laughs> <laughs> I come in, I'm like, come on. <laughs> so um, these you get, I got these actually on Amazon, but there's a whole bunch of different kinds of, they're called rub tape, and uh, very uh, good to have. If they're electrical cords, maybe you could put some extension cords to, and kind of just, you know, put them along the wall so the patient doesn't trip. Um, and with the oxygen, you know, there's that green oxygen tubing that'll just help the patient um, be able to see the contrast a little bit better. And I also want to say, I mean, you guys probably already know, but I recently learned this. There's different kinds of oxygen tubing, and there's one that's much softer than the regular one. So I don't know if you guys knew about that, but you can request that a lot of times from the oxygen, the company, and it's kind of like gel. It's just really kind of, just kind of rolls, and the patient loves it, and you know, it doesn't hurt them behind the ears, and just as, by the way. How's the kinking? Is it kink? Fun? Doesn't kink. Hmm? Yeah. No, very, very soft. It's kind of like, yeah. Very movable. Yeah. All right, so that was the entrance way and the entryway. Bedroom. Make sure all the light switches are within reach. And if it's not possible, there is. And I touched it. Yes, there's that. <laughs> but there's also voice activated and motion activated light. And there's a light bulb with a wireless remote control for less than $10 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I attached that to the back so you can see what that looks like. So. The actual light bulb is remote control. You just put it wherever you, the lamp or wherever, and then just attach the remote control where the patient can reach it. Also, the clicker. They have them all over. Yeah. Use it in the house. Yeah. Yeah. This way, the patient's not reaching for the um, for the lamp. Um, much safer. And what I was saying about making sure there's enough space in the room for the walker. You know, and just uh, you gotta make if the patient's using a walker, make sure you have that. Throw rugs, rug tape, same thing in the bedroom. And then if it's in a facility, make sure they can get to the um, call button. A lot of times they're removable from the wall, and they can be attached to the patient <coughs> if the patient isn't in the bed. Okay, so we're back to the bathroom and shower. Any questions so far? I think I'm good on timing. Okay. Bath mats with non-skid bottoms. If the patient is inside the shower, grab bars that aren't suction. And they also have, you know, those tape things that you put on bottom so they're not slippery. Rubber ducky tape, whatever it is, or just plain um, treads to keep them from slipping. Uh, motion activated light for when they go into the bathroom at night. Um, they even have a light that lights up the toilet bowl so they know where that is. Uh, and that is on Amazon too, and I attached it. And again, less than $10. All right, so is a patient using a bar of soap and is it gonna slip out of their hands and they're gonna bend over and all that stuff. So I have a soap pouch. And what you do is you put a bar of soap. It's meant for this. You put a bar of soap in here, <coughs> close it up. Patients love this. You close it up, the bar's in here, and then you kind of put it on your wrist so it doesn't fall. You lather it up, and you don't have to worry about it falling um, and then reaching over to get it. Another thing that I have tried is you just take a stocking, a stocking. tie it to the bar. Shampoo bottles with a pump. They can just yeah. pump it one-handed. Yeah. You don't have to worry about them squeezing or letting go of both hands. This way they kind of hold on to the grab bar that's on the wall. Um, better access for that. Make sure they have a proper shower chair or a tub bench at a good height. That makes it easy to get in and out. And if the water splashes out, on your last page, there's a little a few pictures of how to solve that problem. What you do is you get a liner for like 99 cents, 
and you cut, as you could see, you could kind of cut two little slits, um, the width of the actual tub bench, and it fits in between the slats. The tub bench is usually three slats. It fits in between, and then the rest of the shower cur tur curtain goes around, and no water splashes. So 99 cents, your problem solved. Um, and you don't get all wet either. <laughs> so that's always a great idea for patients. I lost my spot. Okay. Uh, I think you guys give commodes or toilet seats, right? As part of the DME? Okay, so commodes? Okay, do they ever use the toilet, though? Or do they always just use a commode? Oh no, we use it, we take the bucket out. And you put it over the toilet. Okay, so that solves the problem. There's also, you know, the raised toilet seat with handles, but if you have the commode, you do the same thing. Okay. Um, patient sitting on the toilet, okay, or commode, whatever, the pants are down. Then they want to reach down to pick up their pants and they topple over. So, this is a dressing stick. Okay, so if they have it nearby, you use the hook to hook it up to the pants waistband, or the underwear, pull-ups, whatever, just to pull it up high enough that they can reach it without bending over, mm -hmm. and then pull it up. Reduces the risk of falls, reduces the need for bending over. This comes in very handy. All right, kitchen. Same thing, throw rug, rug tape. Um, everything within reach, cabinet, <laughs> kitchen, in the refrigerator. Um, make sure the containers are light so the patient can carry it. If they're not, at least transfer them to something lighter. Um, if they can't get anything smaller. Um, if the patient is, is using a walker and needs to carry things, there's walker trays, walker baskets. Um, and I saw this really neat idea, next page, someone on Facebook actually posted. They went to the dollar store and they got that little, you've seen it? Mm -hmm. So they got that little basket with, uh, with I guess there's two shark rings. Open, yeah, shark yeah, the rings, but there's two yeah. openings in the actual basket. Neat. And they just pull it, because baskets could get expensive for patients, yeah. $24, $25, yeah. So this is for two bucks. Um, I've yet to try it, but um, it looks like it could work. If the patient isn't safe, remove the stove dials for safety. All right, so now visual impairments. What I like to do a lot of times for the microwave, for the remote control, for the phone, is I cut Velcro into little circles and just mark um, a few buttons, a few central buttons on either, on all those devices. So the patient knows when they feel the button on the phone, that's the five, right? And then they could go up or down from it, but at least they can know what they're dialing. Um, on the microwave, I just put it usually on like the start button, like maybe one or two other ones that they use, um, so that they're able to know what to press. Um, pre-programmed emergency numbers on the phone. Again, motion-activated night lights or lights. Hopefully will help them a little bit if they do have some vision. Uh, and this I have used is color tape on the doorways so that they know where the doorway starts and they're not banging into it. Um, just like removable paint tape, so it's not going to damage the walls. Um, but at least they know how to get in and out of the bathrooms and doorways safely. And back to the rug tape. Okay. Pet care. Okay. Get uh, smaller little litter box bags or food bags. Um, they also have long handled bowls and long handled litter scoops or whatever they're called, mm, poop scoops, um, so that they're not bending over to clean. And again, there's I think I put a picture of that somewhere in there. So. Long handles, mm -hmm. so they don't have to worry about it. And there's always the option of a gate to keep the dog or the cat or the pet uh, away. We talked about the green oxygen cording and then educating the patient in safety. Uh, wheelchair, if a patient cannot reach the brakes, 
there are brake extensions. Um, again, on Amazon, or I've seen them made, you know, people just kind of build up the, um, the brake so that the patient can reach it. If they're only one-handed, they can kind of reach for it that way, um, just to ensure that they lock the wheelchair. Um, if the cushion is slipping out of the chair, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have seen the Dyson or not. Okay. What it is, is um, it's kind of like the material of jar openers. And I'll pass it around, but it's sticky. It's sticky. So anything that you put on it, you see it's already stuck. Anything that you put will not slip. So if you put this between the cushion and the wheelchair, it won't slip. And actually it has a lot of other uses for anything, I mean, anytime. Um, under... Yes. <laughs> I haven't tried it on Kim yet. Yeah. We'll try it. We'll try it. I'll pass this around because this is pretty cool. Hmm? Yeah, she said she hasn't tried it on I haven't yet. tried it on her. Oh, uh, is it expensive that stuff? But I know someone who has tried it like on their kitchen floor to go into the kitchen and then they put it on the floor. The dog wouldn't go in the kitchen. It would not step on that. On this? It didn't want its foot to stick. And it kept the dog out of the kitchen. Ah, yeah. see? Yeah. Let me pass this around. Um, it's about $30 a roll. But you don't need to just kind of cut it. Um, okay, so that's for the wheelchair. All right, other ideas. Figure we've got some time. And then I do want to, we'll combine, well, we'll go through the ideas, and then I do want to show you a few basic things from uh, OT-wise, because I know hospice patients most of the time don't get OT, but there are things that could still help them be able to function and do things on their own. Um, and I am going to leave you guys with some catalogs just for you to look through and see what's even available. I mean, everything, there's a solution for practically everything. Um, I wouldn't order it from here because they're really expensive, but just let you know that they're out there on Amazon. I should get paid from Amazon. <laughs> I'm a good commercial. Yeah, yeah right? UPS guy knows me. Well. <laughs> well. Um, okay, so let's go through this first. Socks. When socks are too slippery and the patient doesn't want to wear those little hospital socks, you take any pair of socks any socks, and you get puffy paint. This was 99 cents in Walmart. And you take the bottom of the sock, and you draw anything on it, and this will become non-skid. So a regular sock, Kim tried it, she was not able to skid. Yeah, she was stuck. Okay, and this really works. Um, just as a little she tip, house a lot, <laughs> I got a lot of things to keep her, right? You thought I was off on Tuesday, but really I was just stuck to the floor with ice cream. Ice cream and this. Puffy paint. One little tip, wait for it to dry. This is a fail. <laughs> I was a little impatient, I'm like, <laughs> so that's that. But it doesn't take much, and it really, uh, the patient could still wear the same socks they're always wearing, but they're not slipping. So this is always a good tip. I would also instruct the patient when they're sitting on the edge of the, when they're getting up, sit on the edge of the bed for a few seconds so you're not dizzy and not falling that way. Um, if a patient is using a reacher and a walker, what I like to do a lot of times is take the reacher and put Velcro like on two spots like the, let's say the male part of the Velcro, and then the other part of the Velcro on the walker. And then they just have to just stick it onto the walker and it's with them at all times. Mm. And they just pull it off when they don't need it, they could keep it on the bed, if, you know, whatever it is, there's, there's that option to have it just sticking. Mm -hmm. All it takes is a really a little piece of Velcro and they don't have to worry about bending down. I think I invented that. <laughs> I'll think about that. I might have. I'm not, I must have seen it somewhere. <laughs> so there's a little more time, and I wanted to show you a few other things that could help you guys. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You sound so excited. Woo! Yes. Thank you. Woo! Yes, thank Woo! you. <laughs> yes, I carried it here. Come on. I'm actually going to do a few. We got a few, right? We got a few times. Okay.
Have you seen feeding utensils? Yes. Okay. There's ones with built up handles. <laughs> Parkinson's is the weighted ones. This is a weight. Um, a lot of them are also bendable. So easier access to their mouth okay, when they're having trouble feeding themselves. So I just wanted you to know that they're out there. You make those? You buy them. I won't tell you where I bought them. Because <laughs> I think we know. They're on Amazon. <laughs> But yeah, um, but yeah, but this, I'm actually going to leave you these because this works just as well. Um, these are built up foam handles. There's a hole in the middle. So as I said before, you just stick a fork in it and stick a fork in it or a spoon, whatever it is. It gives you the grasp. So patients who can't close their hand all the way and have trouble gripping the fork, at least they're able to feed themselves. I've used it on a toothbrush. I've used it on a pen. Um, anything that you need a grip. I mean, this is awesome. What are they called? What These it? are built-up handles. They come in a tube of a pack of six from Amazon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and um, you just cut them as needed. So I'm going to leave you guys these. Just as, you know, if you ever come up with, some, with a patient that might use them, just a... Uh, you just made me think even of a patient of ours who writes on a tablet but has trouble closing her hand. To Any grip. The pen. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Okay. You want one? I'll throw it to you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. We practice. We practice this. Yeah. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. So these I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you a few of the rug tapes. Um, I also wanted to make, well, we'll go through this in a minute. I wanted to make sure you guys know there are elastic shoelaces. Um, if the patient has, huh? That's fine. Yes, yes. So patients don't have to bend down. Again, a fall risk if you bend down. Um, if it doesn't fit, you could also cut it, but usually they fit into regular pins. Um, you put it on like normal uh, shoelaces and tie them, uh, and then you never have to untie them again. So it basically changes the shoe into a slip on, and they don't have to worry. There's a long shoehorn, there's this, they're pretty much independent with putting on the shoes. Socks is another issue, mm -hmm. which is, what? Oh, it's socks pull her up. Right? Exactly, that's my next thing. Yeah. Thanks for last thing. Any questions so far? Amazon, right? Yes, <laughs> you need my membership number? I'm a prime member. There we go, prime member. <laughs> Do you use the glow and dark tape at all? No. Oh, okay. No, I heard but I guess mention that. I'm Glow sure that could help. Around the light switch. You could do that. You could yeah. do it around doorways. And what you were saying before, the the changeover between the, the carpet, carpet oh, and yeah. the floor, I'll yeah. put some there. Yeah. And the steps outside. Yeah, you could definitely use it. I feel like Mary Poppins. I actually feel like the Jewish version, Safta Simcha. <laughs> there is a Safta Simcha. Yes, yes, yes. It's a Safta Simcha. This will be our next cultural in service. <laughs> hmm? There we go, Jewish. <laughs> All right, so what I wanted to show you is the sock aid and then how to use this to take off. So putting on and off socks, which again is a major followers. Always on a stable chair, uh, kind of hard to do it on the bed, then falling backwards. I always recommend um, sitting on a stable chair. Have you seen these? No. Besides on a commercial on TV? Mm -hmm. And have you seen patients use them? And they come in handy, right? But it was different than that. It was uh, the soft one. Yeah, no, it was a metal <laughs> form, and it kind of looked like a paper <laughs> towel holder on the yeah. side. Yeah. 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 Those, are, those are mostly for compression socks. Yeah, for the, the stockings. Those are yeah. 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 yeah, with uh, one of the patients. Okay, I've never seen it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we will demonstrate. Uh, anyone want to come demonstrate? These are brand new socks. I'm trying to bring it down to where the knot is. You don't bend over. You just throw it down, put your foot in, and pull. There we go. Oh, wow. Nice, right? Yeah.